What's up, everybody? This is Southern Copper Chronicles. This is episode two of Distilling 101. Today, I'm going to go into the equipment you need if you would like to distill alcohol. Really simple, right? I'm keeping this whole series as simple as I possibly can. <clears throat> you need three things in order to distill alcohol. You need a pot, you need some kind of container to hold an alcoholic liquid. You need a heat source to heat that alcoholic liquid up and turn it into an alcoholic vapor. Then you need a condenser to take that alcoholic vapor back into an alcoholic liquid. Once you do that, you're going to end up with a alcoholic liquid that is a much higher concentration than your initial uh, alcohol your wash your your mash your wine your beer whatever you want to call it right you're taking something from around eight percent to twenty percent alcohol you're turning it into something that is you know sixty percent to ninety percent alcohol all right you're taking wine and turning it into a fine spirit. I get a lot of questions on Facebook about what is this, what is this, I don't understand it. Um, so I'm trying to break this down as simple as possible throughout this series. And gear this towards someone who has zero experience um, and, and just wants to get into the hobby. Because it really is probably one of the most fine hobbies that I've ever had. I enjoy making beer, enjoy making wine. There's nothing as gratifying as making your own spirit. It really is far none one of the best things that you can possibly do. Okay? So, what did I say we needed? We needed some kind of vessel to hold our alcohol, or our alcoholic fermented liquid. Right. Grain, sugar, whatever it is, we ferment it. This is my pot. This is the first thing you're going to need. A couple different forms of pot. You have a badass 50 gallon copper pot. This one here was built by Rocky Point Copper Stills. You can have a something you bought on Amazon that's five gallons. Still going to work. Still going to be fine. Tinker, you take a stainless steel beer can or beer keg. This is one from about 15 years ago I built. I'm going to be doing a whole other series on taking a uh, stainless steel keg, turning it into a, a, a still efficient, relatively inexpensive, cheaper than your, your, your big copper pot. <clears throat> So you, you have to have your pot. Pot. This is a smaller pot, stainless steel uh, pot, milk can pot, whatever. Something that is vapor tight, liquid tight, that's going to withstand the heat to withstand the heat and hold the vapor to concentrate the alcoholic liquid into a vapor. I have seen, just on a quick side note, people ask, what about you know, aluminum? Why can't I use a big aluminum pot? Get rid of a little bit cheaper. All right, aluminum is not gonna kill you. It, some people are like, oh no, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous to use aluminum. Not so much now, 50 years ago, probably. Um, but your aluminum is going to throw off a bad metallic flavor because it's an alloy and you're going to get this really th i've tried it you're going to get this really thick black build up where your alcohol vapor contacts your aluminum it's going to taste like the most horrible tin can you ever had don't don't try to use anything aluminum only use copper only use stainless steel for your main pot for your still okay I want to throw that in there and it gave me an excuse to get a drink. 
So now I'm up here. Right, so I'm putting a liquid to this pot that contains alcohol. It's my match, it's my wash, my beer, my wine, whatever I'm using. What do I need to do with it then? Well, now I need to heat it up. A few different ways now to heat it up. Old school, traditional, wood. Hey, you can use some old oak, hickory, whatever, build a little bed of coals, heat it up. Going to do the trick. That's how I grew up doing it, originally. Easy to get too hot, easy to scorch the liquid. And for most people, it's uh, not really logical because people can't really start a fire in their garage. Next most common thing people use is a turkey fryer. Uh, this is a very old one I used a long time ago. There's newer ones that are much more efficient. Uh, you know, hook up a grill bottle and heat it up, let it go. Again, it takes a while. Uh, it takes, you know, to heat my 50 gallon pot up with propane. And it's going to take three or four hours because you can't just, you know, blast the propane because uh, you're, you're still going to scorch the liquid that's in here. My personal preference, what I recommend for heat sources is electric heat. You can build your own setup. I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. Build your own setup. You can buy one if you'd like one. This is an electric spirits distillation controller uh, box. 11,000 watts. Uses ultra low watt density stainless steel elements. You know, very efficient, very small chance of scorching. I'll heat this whole pot up 50 gallons in around, generally around 50 minutes. If, I, if I'm just heating up the pot, even if I'm heating up the thumper, doesn't take but about an hour. Costs about six dollars in electricity for a full run instead of you know two bottles of propane, depending on where you're at, 13 to 20 dollars uh, for a refill of propane, as well as the time you save. So that's enough on that. So I've got my pot, I've got my heat source. Wood, propane, electric, doesn't matter. You just gotta heat your liquid up to produce an alcohol vapor. Well, now I have to get that alcohol vapor and I have to take that vapor and have to turn it back into a liquid. This is one of my favorite types of condensers. Small footprint. I can use an electric pump. I pump water into the bottom of this jacket and water comes out the top. My hot vapor comes in to the top of the condenser. This is a, a solid water jacket. So there's a tube that goes from here all the way down to here. And this jacket just encases it in water. So if my liquid comes in up here really hot, I pump cool water in through my jacket and cool condensed alcohol comes out the bottom small footprint i can take my uh, container i use a 55 gallon drum for my reservoir that's what i like to use if you're using a smaller pot and 55 gallons you don't need to use something that big but i can use just a small pump something like this harbor freight Lowe's, home depot harbor freight has the best prices Hook it up, pump cool water through this, and cheap, extremely efficient. So my vapor goes in here, vapor comes down through the center tube, water goes around this tube, and it cools it as it goes down, liquid comes out the bottom. Extremely simple. This setup is exactly the same as this, except I've got two, right? There's a tube on each side. It just increases my output makes it a little bit faster. Works exactly the same. Some of what you see in more traditional setups, what I grew up with, is called a worm. This isn't functional. Obviously, I just have some extra copper. I want to show you guys the concept. You 
You have a bucket with cool water. You have a copper coil. Your vapor comes out of your pot, goes into the copper coil. At the bottom of this bucket, there would be a hole where the copper coil came out of. So your alcohol vapor goes in here. This is full of cool water and it causes the alcohol vapor to condense as it goes down in a spiral. It comes out nice and cool in a cool condensed alcoholic liquid. Nothing wrong with worm. A worm works very well. Uh, I just prefer having a smaller footprint and keeping all my water, my cooling water outside, make less of a mess. Um, we're going to get into other episodes where we're going to more condenser types, how to build a bigger shotgun condenser and, you know, go into some of that. But for now, for the very basic purposes of this one-on-one series, I've got a pot, I've got a heat source that goes in my pot, under my pot, heats my alcoholic liquid, turns into an alcoholic vapor, the alcoholic vapor then goes into a condenser and gets cooled back into an alcoholic liquid. Now you see a couple other things sitting around here. This is the equipment portion. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So this is called a thumper. What it does, it will increase your proof and your output. So I'm heating this alcoholic liquid. And inside of my thumper, I've got a couple inches of alcoholic liquid in here. Once I heat this up, it goes through the steam, travels through my lint arm, the section from your thumper to your condenser, or from your pot to your thumper, or from your thumper to your condenser is called your lint arm. So I'm going through my lint arm, this tube goes all the way down, almost to the bottom of my thumper. All this hot steam, this, this concentrated alcohol steam, is now going to heat this liquid up in the thumper. Once the liquid in this thumper heats up enough, it's going to start to produce vapors. The vapors, are they going to rise? What do we have to have? We have to have a heat source, uh, or a... Uh, holding tank, some kind of container, a heat source, and a condenser. So we have one heat source, now we have a second heat source using the first heat source, and these vapors come up. So now all these alcoholic vapors going through here hit the liquid, they've condensed. So now this is a much more concentrated alcohol. So now it's more concentrated alcohol in my thumper is producing a much more concentrated alcohol vapor and it's traveling up and then hitting my condenser and coming out an even more concentrated alcohol distillate, a more concentrated alcohol liquid. All right. One other little thing we're going to hit on and I'm, I'm going to do some of this as we go. I'll show you this is a setup for a mason jar thumper setup. Basically, instead of having a single thumper, I can run through this thumper and then through mason jar setups. So basically, I get five distillations. Uh, one of those little things to look forward to. I'm going to show you guys how to build one of those coming up that, that is extremely efficient and safe and, and works well. Yep. Nope, I just dropped it. Don't worry about me. I'm not even going to cut any of this out because I want this to be legit. I'm not, I'm not, I try to be as real as possible, guys. So we have our thumper. There's a couple other pieces of equipment that is essential if you are just getting into distilling. One of the main ones being your proof and trails hydrometer. Yes, you can distill without a proof and trails hydrometer, but why would you? All this is going to do 
is going to give you your alcohol percentage of a distilled product. Now, during the 101 series, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison and show you the proven trails hydrometer from a specific gravity hydrometer and uses for each. But if you're just getting started, I want to make some alcohol. I'm just showing you what you need to get ordered, make, whatever, to get started. So you're going to need a proof and trails hydrometer. It's going to say 100 on one side, 200 on the other side. It's going to give you your alcohol percentage and your proof of your distilled alcohol. So let's uh, just recap real quick. I'm, the things I'm going to have to have, I'm going to have to have a pot. I'm going to have to have a heat source, electric, propane, wood, and I'm going to have to have a condenser. It can be a lithic style condenser, it can be a worm, it can be a super fancy shocking condenser, which I'll show you guys how to use later. For any of those condensers, you're going to need water to cool the, the to run through the condenser to cool the vapor back down into a liquid and I highly recommend a hydrometer so that's that's the basic hardware there's a couple other little fancy things that make things a little bit easier help out but this is stuff you have to have I'll get a little bit more in depth on some of the other fancy hardware with the deflimigator, side glasses, uh, some of the you know nifty cool guy stuff you have to have. You don't have to have it to make your first run of, of good tasting alcohol. You have to have a pot, a heat source, and a condenser. That's it. If you have any questions, check me out on Facebook, Southern Copper Chronicles. Uh, if you'd like more information on the electric controllers, uh, check me out on Facebook at uh, Electric Spirit Distillation Controllers and drop comments. If there's something that I didn't clarify that you don't understand in this video, hey, just put it in a comment. I'll fire the camera back up and I'll clarify it and explain it. Nothing wrong with one extra video in the series. All right, I'm going to be doing this series for about the next three weeks. Expect a video probably every three to four days. We're going through the whole process. Tomorrow or the next day, I will be going through the equipment, hardware you need for making your first mash. And then I'm going to go through a recipe I know works that's extremely easy without converting any grains. Uh, it, it, you can get stuff pretty much anywhere. Um, and we're going to start our first mash. So just stay tuned. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. That's going to help me do more advanced videos and get things rolling um, to help the community out even better. And I very much appreciate y'all watching and, you know, listen to my rambling, listen to my goats and my peacocks, and uh, hope to see y'all here in a couple days. Thanks, guys.